please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mark Harville Art. This is what we'll be, be painting today. A uh, little nice scene here. Um, so just wet in the canvas here. Uh, started with just a basic ground color, um, mainly just white, little purple, and some Indian yellow, covering everything with gesso, um, and then adding more uh, straight Indian yellow here, uh, just using a large two inch brush, get that on there. Add a little purple at the top and uh, working fast so that I can get everything blended. If I work quick enough, then I can kind of treat my acrylics like oil paints and, and get that done. Now just starting to add the basic um, little hills in the background. Uh, the canvas at this moment is still wet, so it's kind of still blending nicely, which is what I wanted. I'm using a little blue. Uh, a little bit of um, purple with this color and also uh, using some burnt umber to achieve uh, that mountain color. Uh, now uh, let that uh, dry and I've come back with uh, using um, blue and um, some hooker's green or uh, I think I was using um, a hooker's on that one but I got those those colors uh, mix there with a little white that's going to be used for my um, grassy hill. Uh, just uh, some really distant uh, grasses and trees and that's just on the shadow side. So uh, as I move to the um, highlighted side, my, my light source will be coming from the right. Um, I'll just go back with uh, um, a white and um, yellow green mixture and start working some of the highlights uh, as I'm doing right now. Um, my brush I'm using just a really small round brush um, and, and just kind of using some some upward strokes and some downward strokes just to give the impression that uh, we've got some distant foliage there. Now I'm coming with a lot more intensity. Um, I'm th this this scene, of course, is going to be sort of a, 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 an early uh, evening or a late evening uh, sunset. Uh, so the sun source is going to be closer to the horizon. And um, so I'm using more of just a pure yellow green color on this. And um, I use golden open. Uh, acrylic paints. Um, I live in Colorado, so it's really dry here. And I found that by using the heavy body acrylics, it dries way too fast out here. Uh, we have such low humidity. So um, I switched over to Golden Open. They're, they're mainly uh, manufactured for outdoor painting and just has a longer dry time but still have to work pretty quickly here to get the, the effects that I want to get. So um, this yellow green color comes with golden open and uh, it's just a, a certain brand of, or, or type of paint there that you can get. I'm going back through and adding uh, a little bit more highlight on my shadow side. And now I'm coming back with uh, starting some distant trees, a, a nice stand of trees in the back and and I've just taken my blue and my doxazine purple and my uh, burnt umber um, with just a little white to opaque it. And that's the colors I'm using to get my stand of trees in the back. I'm using a, a small flat uh, brush and, um, and just go through there and, and just create the illusion of, of lots of different shapes. Um, and sizes of these trees. So don't need to put a lot of effort into getting them shaped perfectly right now. Um, and that they're going to be so distant that it's more just a matter of, of getting them worked in there and giving them some highlight, but not a whole lot of detail. We will really need to go into that and I'll later come back and I'll add some, uh, some early, some late evening or early morning mist, um, 
and that'll help to sort of seat those and push them farther into the background. So now I'm coming back with my yellow green color and staying to the right of the trees um, where my sun, my light source will be hitting and, and just giving them a, a real simple um, highlight on the side of those trees. So I've added the fog now, and what I did was uh, I just used an airbrush. I, I could have used a, a, a regular um, brush and um, just scrubbed that effect in there, but uh, I, I like the softness of the airbrush a lot, and, and a lot of it's going to get covered anyway with a lot of the foreground, but I uh, wanted just to pop it in there really quickly and, and sort of get everything pushed back and that'll help to be a better separator for the next stand of trees, which I'm using the same purple, blue, and umber mixture, but just darkening it up a little bit more and giving it a just a little bit more detail now, not a whole lot, but, but just enough um, because it's still going to be fairly far in the background. Um, and then just going back and adding my highlight to the right of the tree. Um, it's good to have a, just a good brush that you can fan out and get those hairs uh, really separated so that you can pop those in there and, and uh, still have a lot of the uh, background of those trees showing through. And, um, you know, I wanted to add a little separation, a uh, little land formations starting to come in. Um, and I'm just using just a sideward stroke motion with my brush and bringing that in there. Um, I'm coming back now with, with more of some of that yellow green mixed with um, some Indian yellow for the furthest uh, part of the field. And then just kind of popping in a little bit of my uh, shadow color. So the shadow color I use um, moving forward is going to just be dioxazine purple and uh, mixed with some burnt umber and burnt sienna in a little white. Um, so that'll be the shadow color you'll see me using quite a bit throughout the painting. And now as I'm moving forward, I'm, I'm uh, not using the sideward stroke so much as now I'm using my fan brush and kind of giving it an upward stroke to start to form those um, just just the grasses in the field um, some of the you know it could be long grass um, out on the prairie and 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 that's what I'm trying to achieve and I'm, I'm still using um, just as I move forward I'm, I'm using more of a pure uh, Indian yellow mixed with a little bit of burnt umber um, and and as I move forward with that I'll just kind of darken that that mixture so going back in the back and just highlighting the field a little bit more using a little bit more yellow a little bit more of my greens and and trying to get that established and that'll just kind of this will serve as my as my underpainting um, as i go back through i'll keep adding more highlights with my indian yellow and i'll even move into uh, using my my um, white and my phthalo yellow and phthalo orange um, is my D is my brightest highlight color and I'll just keep uh, stroking upward with my fan brush and eventually I'll move over to a uh, script liner brush to get more of those uh, grassy effects in the background the, the thing I liked about this painting um, as I was working on it was um, just using the rule of contrast between the shadows and between the highlights. And, and so there's a lot of, of good contrast um, with my lights and my darks. And that's, I think, what make, made this painting work a lot. And I'm also using my color wheel quite a bit um, uh, between my, my purpley colors and my greenish and yellowy colors. Um, 
which are complementary colors on the on the color wheel. So just trying to make it really a, appealing to the eye. And I and I try to keep thinking about my color wheel as I go through the painting. So I'm adding some more uh, shadows now that are getting cast off to the left since my light source is coming from the right. So a lot of those trees, I'm just trying to create some, some basic shadows way deep in the distance on that. There's always a lot of things to think about when I'm, when I'm painting. I'm thinking about my composition, thinking about my colors, thinking about my uh, you know, all, all the, all the different things, um, that, that are, I think, going to make this painting work. And this will be an eye stopper here, uh, putting my tree here in more of the middle ground, um, can serve to help as an eye stopper there off to the right. And so, uh, I put that there, uh, on purpose to sort of create that, that nice eye stopper and keep, keep the focus kind of pushing toward the center of the painting a little bit. And uh, bring in some more dark color. This is going to be the border uh, between the field and the road here in the front. So I wanted to make sure that was pretty dark and that'll eventually become the fence line. So uh, just bringing in, again, working the field, uh, slowly building that and uh, right here, talking about that, the, the, the rule of contrast, uh, putting those large brush strokes from the uh, dark grasses over the, the light grasses uh, just adds a very nice effect. Um, and so, so using my fan brush to get those individual grassy strokes in there. This is a large uh, painting. This is a 16 by 40 inch, so a very long painting um, in terms of its um, width. So um, my, my head's gonna get in the way a little bit. I apologize for that, but still working on the rule of contrast, bringing in the lights over the darks, the darks over the lights. And, and uh, it's just, it's appealing to the eye, I think. And I, I love the, uh, the purples and the, and the uh, browns and yellows um, that complement each other, which is what I, I really liked about working um, this particular subject. Now I'm uh, working on my tree again, and uh, I made sure just to use um, a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, and some burnt umber for my base on the tree and then just going back and slowly adding my highlights and I make these pretty light um, and uh, then just popping in of course uh, some yellow green over my my dark background there so um, and I'll just keep working on this tree throughout time as it dries I'll add a few more uh, individual leaf strokes um, since it's a little bit closer to the foreground, I wanted to make sure that uh, I have some individual leaves um, showing through. I'm slowly building this up and, and lightening up my my yellow green, adding more white um, and and a little bit more uh, phthalo yellow to that pile just to get those highlights. And now I'm just really trying to separate out some some of the leaves uh, on the borders of, of the canopy on, on there. Uh, since it breaks the horizon, um, I thought it, it looked really nice to be able to see the, the individual leaf patterns um, that are sort of bordering around the tree. So this just takes time. Um, I'm adding a little bit of uh, blue and green mixture in uh, just to have sort of a mid-tone um, right next to the lights so that it has an, a nice transition between dark to light. 
And I'm going back through and I'm adding some background color now. I'm just, I'm just opening a canopy. I'm using some of my Indian yellow and popping in um, a little bit of the sky showing through the, uh, the canopy of the trees. So that's what you're seeing it there at the top. And um, let's keep working on this and lightening this throughout time. I'll even come back later and, and revisit it a little bit and refine a little bit more. But when I work on certain subjects, I like to kind of focus and get about 90% through working it. Some artists I know like to just kind of skip around and when you get bored, jump to something else. And But I like to try to get something nearly complete. I'll always come back at the very end and, and do some refining work, but that's just kind of the way I like to paint. So now I come back and adding some individual limbs and, and twigs um, and, and kind of getting that to that that point. Come back with uh, my my palette knife and just kind of cutting in some some more thick bright color so that it really kind of pops in the background there. I really want to show that that sunlight is is really coming through down through the valley there and between the tree stands and uh, and so I can best achieve that with uh, some really thick color. And as, as everyone knows who works with acrylics, um, acrylics tend to dry a couple shades darker, which is the unfortunate scenario with acrylic paint. But if you get it thick enough, um, it, it usually can can hold its its color. And so when you're looking at really working on highlights, um, it's always good to come in really thick with those final highlights uh, so that you can uh, prevent the dulling effect that can happen through uh, through the drawing process. All right, so we're coming back through and with the script liner brush now getting some more individual um, grasses, tall field grass that's growing out there on the, on the plains. And um, so I'll, I'll kind of work and jump back and forth and kind of add I'll use different colors. I'll jump between um, adding some of the Indian yellows going into some of my yellow green. And then finally, um, the, the, the deepest highlight that I put in is going to always be my white, my orange, and my yellow is my final highlight. So working more on the, on the border there with the grasses um, between the field and, and the little uh, dirt road that I'll, I'll be making here. So just adding my purple color and and just again, my purple is always doxazine purple for the shadow with um, either burnt sienna uh, to keep it kind of warm or a little bit of burnt umber um, just to keep it kind of dark. But that's that's my common mixture. I'll add a little bit of um, of titanium white there to help to opaque it and uh, also to kind of lighten it up a little bit so it's not quite so uh, abruptly dark. You'll always be adding a little bit more purple, and I love purple. I use purple a ton. Um, you got to be careful with purple, though. It can kill things, but if you use it properly and with the right ratios of um, use some of your siennas and your umbers with a little bit of your, your whites, even maybe a little bit of blue, um, like an ultramarine blue to kind of help to dull that purple a little bit. That's the best way to have some good uh, shadows. And I think purple is, is the perfect shadow color in a lot of instances, especially when working with uh, grasses and with uh, soils in your painting. So coming through now, since this is the closest to the foreground, these uh, grasses are definitely a lot longer strokes to give that impression that it's closer. And now just forming the fence line and I'm really just using um, uh, burnt umber and, and some black. Uh, I didn't want to have it pure black but uh, put a little umber in there and a little bit of white to gray it out. And that will be the fence line color for the base. Um, and then just using the script liner to add my, my little uh, wire. Um, so trying to make it appear really old, um, this, this is like an, I'm trying to give the, the effect that this is an old homestead, it's an old abandoned farm, 
Um, and so everything's very aged, and I think that helped to, to make this work for this particular painting. And uh, just bringing in. And I'll slowly kind of start bringing in those shadows a little bit, bringing in some of the road, um, using a lot of my umber and sienna colors, um, and just and just kind of scrubbing this on here. Um, and I'll also bring in a lot of my my purple shadow mixture, and uh, that'll become the road. Um, eventually, later on in the in this video, you'll see that I cover it all back up. I just wasn't hap as happy as I think I could have been with it, and and I wanted to to get it started over again. So, um, just went through and and made that change. But um, this is the beginning of of kind of bringing that in and and then adding uh, some of my my um, Indian yellow and, and bright yellow just to begin with and get that get that underpainting in work a little bit more on the fence line I'm using a pure white here I really wanted to have some really bright highlights um, for this painting just to show that the, the sun is really kind of bursting through uh, here on the horizon so, and I'll just work with that and play with that a little bit, put some grasses in, in front of the fence line, get those fences seated in, uh, bringing in some, some pure white uh, highlight on top of uh, the wiring on that fence as well, just help that stand out. And, and also just to continue with the contrast um, rule that, that I was talking about. Um, so keep working on that and get, and get those posts seeded by, by adding the, uh, the long grasses uh, from the field poking out and through it and in front of it. So um, that's kind of the, the, the method behind the madness on that. And I'll just kind of keep balancing between uh, doing my, my light grasses and my dark grasses um, in front of each other um, and that'll help to, uh, to create that effect. Now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm coming through here and, and so, sort of adding some, some uh, grasses kind of tucked in into the, the back of, um, of those grasses there so it really kind of pushes those out and creates some mounds um, that are around the post line there. And of course my highlights. Always kind of thinking about my light source and uh, and so I'm using my, my white, orange, and yellow mixture. And uh, I'll just intensify that and keep building upon it and working it. So. I'll work it quite a bit. And as I said, this is all gonna get covered up anyway, um, because in the end, I, I just wasn't overly happy with it. Uh, and I think what what bothered me about it was um, the grass that I put into the road itself that was poking right down the middle of, of the uh, dirt road. And um, I just think it didn't, it just didn't work well. Um, and so wanted to, to change that a little bit and that's really the reasoning why I went back through it and just did it all over again so so still working this and um, I think another problem with the road was I, I just killed too much of the underpainting which I think was a little bothersome um, it's it's really important to always allow for your negative spaces and, and allow for a lot of the underpainting to to show through, and I think I killed it too much with some of my highlights, and of course uh, my grasses that I'm putting in here um, started uh, just getting, I think, a little bit too thick on the on the the uh, individual grass stems um, was another thing that kind of bothered me about it. So um, I tend to go back and make a lots of changes and adjustments. Pretty pretty typical for me when I'm painting, and um, you know, I did the same thing with my cabin too, which you'll see. I started with uh, one 
color uh, and effect on the cabin and, and decided I changed my mind and I went back and completely changed it again. So um, that happens pretty common. Nice thing though with anything in painting is you can always you can always fix it. And so um, so still still adding some more of my uh, my different grasses here and, and um, the highlights on it. But it just didn't really work for me. I think I think it just got a little bit too busy, honestly, and uh, I didn't really want to get it quite so busy because there's just so much going on with this painting anyway. Um, there's there's a lot of detail. There's a lot of, of different subjects between the shack and the trees and the fence line and, and the planes that I'll eventually be painting into it as well as the uh, little windmill that will go into uh, the middle of the field. And I'm just popping in some individual uh, stones and, and pebbles and rocks and that's kind of what you're seeing me do there is use my small round number two brush and just bringing those in there. And I'll bring those back after I cover it all up and start over again. Bring in the shadow uh, of those stones right there. And they'll, they'll even eventually cast some shadows with my purples. So it's a nice effect. Um, I'll bring it back, but it just didn't seem to work as well, in my opinion, uh, for this foreground. So we'll have that updated here pretty soon. And still just trying to cast shadows um, and um, give the illusion that uh, things are, you know, the sun may be setting at this point in time, and but, but the colors are still going to be rich and deep and, and bright for this time of day. So just intensifying those highlights here. So I kind of take a break from that and started working on my my large background tree. This will serve, this will be behind the cabin and kind of creeping out over the cabin, but it will serve as another eye stopper to help to keep uh, the viewer's attention more focused to the center of the painting. Um, but uh, just darkening that base of that and um, and just kind of bringing in the trunks here and I'm just using a, a pure black color on this and then I'll I'll leaf this and uh, and then we'll move on with with that so um, this um, you know this will go pretty quickly here and uh, I'll use my fan brush that'll bring in a lot of the individual leaves um, I mixed this green I, ju I just used um, an ultramarine blue with a phthalo yellow and a little white to create that that green color and then uh, coming back with my yellow green uh, just to highlight it even more and um, and now I've, I've gone ahead and used my charcoal pencil and I've drawn in as you can see the cabin and, and some of the planes in the background um, and this is where I come back to, to cover up my um, my my little um, road um, and then I started working on the cabin and I think here I, I was thinking at first to kind of keep it more of that dark purple tone um, but I'll come back and I'll change that which you'll see pretty quickly but I'll get it all blocked in right now and this is just going to be an old shack but uh, when I got it all worked in there I just felt like um, I had uh, too much purple into that and it needed to be a little bit darker so you can uh, kind of see that I'm getting that um, the, the uh, roof of the of the shack kind of formed here and so we'll just get this blocked in it'll it'll be pretty quick and then I'll come back and I'll just I'll update it and get it a little darker use more of my umbers and um, and and some black and, and really get it darker so starting all over again um, with with this uh, road here and uh, I was happier with this next time around but 
I, I completely covered it with uh, my my dark purple mixture, which is the uh, umber, the sienna, the doxazine purple, some white as the base coat. And then I'll start slowly again, building in my road uh, with uh, some highlight and, and going into that uh, purple mixture and adding a little more white just to change the value and get it a little bit a little bit brighter and then I'll move from from that pile to my highlight pile which will become uh, the white yellow and orange mixture for highlights and this is just a dry dry brush blending uh, with my brush here and um, it's kind of scumbling this on it. It's a lot like I would do if I were painting snow. Um, works just as well that way with snow as it does with just dirt on a road or a path. So, um, and then, you know, it takes patience, slowly build it in. You don't want, again, I don't want to kill a lot of my, my painting. So just trying to keep a lot of it still showing through um, and then and bringing in those highlights. So don't be afraid to, to change things if, if you want to. Uh, it's just, you'll be happier if you just take the time and if you need to cover it up and start over again. Uh, it can be frustrating, but it takes time and patience. Right now I'm using a toothbrush and some really thin paints, some uh, of my browns and whites and blacks and purples and just kind of, kind of uh, splashing in with, with my uh, toothbrush a little bit of, of uh, those kind of graininess uh, to give the impression of rock and and little pebbles and things. And now I'm coming back and adding back in my foreground grasses. And I'll just kind of pop these kind of all over. I wanted to keep it a little bit old and a little bit wild and um, and just, you know, I think what, what makes it work is that it's it's not perfect it's not uniform it's it's just like you might see in nature it could be haphazard it could just be all over the place and this is again an old homestead so you know people have probably not been on this property for years and just things are going to be overgrown and there'll be weeds and it'll just be a little crazy so coming back through with my highlight now um with my uh yellow green mixture and and kind of come back through here and get that brightened up a little bit more with my fan brush. So adding back in those stones, I uh, used a pure white. I wanted to make those very bright and um, so just poke a dot with a pure white, real thick white, uh, titanium and white mixture there, and then um, bring in the shadow with some of my shadow color on the left side of those stones. And then uh, bring in some, some just individual dark, um, long grasses with my script liner brush at this point in time. But I was I was much happier the second time around with my with my little road my little dirt road here. Um, so I'll start bringing in some more shadow, uh, casting shadows right underneath all those grasses. And then I've come back and I, as you can see, I changed my cabin. I I used a more dark gray colors, um, and I thought that just worked a lot better. And working on the shingles now, I'm using my angular brush. It's a great little brush there, um, and getting all those individual shingles kind of kind of just built in, and then thinking about where the shadows are going to be cast on this building. Um, but it was nice. Um, you can be a little bit loose and raw on this because it's not going to be a pretty building. It's going to be old and weathered, have a lot of split, a lot of cracks. Um, There'll be holes, there'll be missing shingles coming in here. Um, just wanted to get that impression here. And slowly just kind of build on this cabin. 
but I, I think uh, just I wanted to change it because the undercoat color was just not right with all that purple, and I think it just worked better to go to my my grays and my and my blacks um, for this cabin. And still use a little purple. Still, I think it's still a great shadow color, um, but I think we just I just had a, a bit of an overkill earlier on with that. So just keep working this, these shingles on this roof and and uh, bring in the different shadows that I think are going to get cast on that. Now I'm using my script liner brush and just really breaking out those shingles, uh, making more individual uh, with with the lines. Uh, just much easier that way to give uh, the the indication of of old shingles that are on the roof and then I'll come back uh, and highlight those on the on the light side and darken the shadow side um, and so that's what can give that that impression that we've got some some light hitting that give us some three-dimensionality to it Adding my holes in the roof, missing shingles. Just used a pure black on that. I use a midnight black. Getting my uh, angles right and uh, this is where I start to uh, form just the individual uh, slats. Um, for the side of the building and I'll add the windows later. I'm just painting over it right now, getting make sure my angles are, are appropriate, um, getting the deck on the front porch in, and then just slowly kind of build this and keep it kind of grainy. I'm using a, a dry brush, uh, not a lot of paint on the brush. I wanted to skim it and um, I think it just adds a really cool kind of weathered effect when you do it that way. Um, just keep it real dry. And I've just darkened my, my color. Um, I'm using my gray. My, the gray I like to use is um, ultramarine blue with um, some burnt umber. Um, with a little white is is a beautiful gray color that I like to use, and that's what I'm using. And I'm just using it in various different um, values by highlighting it. I'm bringing in the windows now, I'm just using a pure black, midnight black for blocking that in, blocking in the, the door now uh, with my gray mixture, blue and umber and white. And then uh, just using my charcoal pencil to kind of outline where I want the next window to be forming. And uh, now just start to have some fun here and give it some character. We're missing boards. Uh, we have um, just just a bunch of, of interesting things here. Little little wood that's kind of patching the siding. Um, and so it was a lot of fun. I, I think I was much happier with the cabin after I had changed my base color and uh, it worked a lot better. Now it's just a matter of just trying to get all the shapes correct and uh, make sure that I'm using all my angles appropriately so that it's sort of uh, properly angled and, and just kind of looks like it. It's uh, an actual cabin sitting there darkening my lines. So I'll just keep working on this and uh, We'll bring in some highlights and some other things, I'm boarding up the windows. Um, that just gives it a real, real good, a real good effect there. So 
So it just takes time and got to be patient with the process. Make sure the you're getting all those angles in the way they need to be, they need to appear so that it kind of fools the eye. I'm just flipping the canvas so I can get to the different uh, sections of the cabin. I'm bringing in some deeper highlights. I'm using a pure white there on the shingles and on the little smoke stack at the top of the of the shack. And then just highlighting, I think, you know, the highlights are really going to make it pop out and uh, really give it its uh, dimension and Putting old posts, holding up the uh, the roof there, and then just adding more highlights just through dry brush skimming. And again, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush, and I oftentimes will wipe it before I start skimming again with it. And then starting with my uh, my little plane here in the distance now. So I'm just using my gray mixture of of blue and umber and white and um, just forming this most distant plane and there's not going to be a lot of detail here i certainly want this to appear as if it's really far in the distance coming uh, toward the shack toward the viewer so just just a, a little bit of highlight or a little bit of detail And so go fairly quickly. More shadow now. And I'm just going to try to get my propeller kind of blended in there. I'm really just, uh, I just created a, a real light glaze with my, uh, with my gray mixture there and just added a, a bunch of extra water to glaze that. And I'll be working on my first uh, plane here in the foreground. Now these planes will have a lot of detail and, and did take a significant amount of time. I'm using my uh, my dagger brush. This is also a really awesome brush just like my angular brush. Uh, I love the daggers and I love the angular brushes. I have several varieties of them of different sizes and they just are great for getting these fine details and these different angles that uh, I need to achieve. When you get to this point, you just really have to slow down and get get the shapes exactly like you want them. Um, I'll go back through later and, and erase some of the charcoal that I missed, but uh, but yeah, these are great brushes, and I recommend uh, if you can get your hands on these dagger brushes and uh, on the angular brushes. Um, I use them a ton, and uh, they're just great. So just coating and double coating, making sure I can get uh, that background uh, covered up so it's not showing through with my gray. And then uh, coming back with uh, my, my this is going to be an, an obviously an orange plane. So uh, this would be my underpainting for orange. I used just orange. Uh, that's a phthalo orange. And I used ultramarine blue um, as its complement color just to get that nice, dark, um, sort of mustardy looking color. Uh, and that, that'll be for my, for my uh, base coat on this, and then I can start highlighting after that. But um, getting this all kind of blocked in now, making sure that I'm getting my angles properly. And I wanted to have this plane appear as if it's sort of starting to, to turn a little bit, so um, that was pretty important. Um, I'm using a really light blue mixture on the back, which will of the of the 
tail fin. And, um, and then we'll just start adding all the little little details and highlights after that point. But I got it mainly blocked in now. I'm putting some of the decals on the plane. And then kind of starting to add some of the highlights. So I've never painted these types of planes before, these World War uh, II or World, World War I, actually, um, fighter planes. Um, so it was it was pretty fun. Started to add, kind of think about where, where the light source is going to be hitting on, on the belly of the plane and kind of in and around the plane. And I just went through my uh, blue and orange mixture and, and changed the value by adding a little bit of, uh, of white and even a little bit of phthalo yellow, a little bit into that mixture to change the value and start using it for highlight. And just uh, trying to figure out where my shadows are as well and bring in a little bit of shadow color. And help to form our the three dimensionality of the of the plane. Using kind of a pure white with my liner brush there, and I use a lot of dry brush technique on this. Um, I think uh, it helps to keep it soft. So. Just going back through now that my uh, base coat is dry and I can I can just dry brush blend with just a little bit of, of paint on the brush, not a whole lot. Like I said, I'll, I'll add the paint and then I'll, I'll wipe a lot of it off on my uh, paper towel and then come back through here. So it's just, it's subtle and I can slowly build on it. But uh, I think it's a, it works as a good technique with, uh, with acrylic paint. And then just adding some of my sun glow here, the silver lining on the wings, working on the underside of the top wing now. And showing a little bit of ribbing um, into the metal of, of the wing. And then slowly start building in more highlights uh, with my great my pile of gray and, and adding more white to change the value and highlight highlight that color a little more. It's still pretty subtle. It's not getting a lot of sun glow. It's uh, it's kind of facing away from the sun, so um, you know just keep keep that effect in mind and uh, add my silver lining once again with with pure white. I don't use a lot of pure white in its pure form. I use it mainly for for the, the main highlights a lot of times. Usually I'll mix it with a little bit of yellow as well, but I still use pure white. But you want to use it really sparingly. Um, it can certainly kill uh, a painting pretty quickly if you use too much of it in, in too much variety. So now just bringing in some of the details um, since I'm not familiar with these World War I planes, I found some reference material and online and um, found some, some photographs of some of these planes. And that's kind of what I'm using to base off uh, for my subject. I'm just starting to add some of the lines I see. Um, I still use that, my my pile of uh, blue and orange and darkened it up so that I can create some of the plating um, 
into the the plane's um, armor here. So that's kind of what you're seeing me do at this point in time, bringing in those subtle details. I just keep kind of building on it and working it. Some of the reflections that you can see in, into the metal of the wings I'm adding there. Adding the other decal, I'm just using black and white for that. And then um, making sure that underneath it, um, it's more of a blue lining instead of a pure white for those decals. It's important to just watch your, your tonal values, uh, make sure you're using the right, the right value, uh, the right color um, for where the object is positioned in the painting and, and how it's positioned in the painting. And that's what helps to uh, give that illusion that uh, of, of realism to what you're doing. Use a lot of my script liner brush here for some of the fine detail work as I'm kind of moving and advancing more into, <clears throat> into the uh, detail of this painting, bringing in my little star Just using a pure black and a pure white for that star. But a lot of it's covered up by that, that bottom wing there. Coming back into the nose, I'm, I'm using a blue-green color. Uh, that I'm dry brushing on there, and then slowly building it up with some lighter value of my blue green. I'm going to start adding my shadows now. This is just going back into uh, a darker value of the blue green. Add a little bit of uh, purple. A little bit of umber into the the blue green mixture to, to get my shadows and as I start to lighten it up I'm moving more into my uh, yellow green color <clears throat> Those are some bolts that can be seen there in the nose of the plane. And I'll start working on that's that's part of the gun and then part of the engine that's sticking out in front of the plane. So bringing all that in, just using black um, as, as the main base coat for that. And using pure white into that gun right there. Then bringing in some of my, my lighter blue-gray mixture there. That's more of like the exhaust pipe to the engine that I'm trying to form. So just some small detail work. Be got to be patient. Um, get your nose to the canvas when it comes to this particular um, type of uh, detail. It's nice to stay loose and it's nice to uh, to work pretty quickly when you're kind of getting something blocked in, but as you start to really get more precision, get more detail, you just gotta kind of have to slow down a little bit. And 
And it took some significant time. My, my, my two planes in the foreground definitely took some significant time. Um, probably, I probably dedicated two to three hours on each of these planes just by themselves, um, just to get the amount of detail that I wanted to get in there. And, uh, you know, several, several breaks in between so that uh, you can kind of clear your head and rest your eyes a little bit. But um, it's pretty easy for me to get lost in my painting and working two or three hours on something just slips by so quickly that I don't, I don't even realize. It feels like it's been 20 minutes. Um, and that's what I love about painting. I'm bringing in my little man, my little pilot now. Not a lot of detail needs to go into him. Um, a lot of it's going to be in silhouette. But uh, I wanted just to kind of get him quickly put in there and and I didn't spend a whole lot of time on him but um, just enough to give the indication that this is the pilot working on his little scarf there in the back and um, for my shadow for the scarf my, my base shadow color I just used um, burnt umber and white I think is a great shadow color for any object that's going to be white. Um, blue works well also, but uh, but umber and, and white work really nicely. So so just kind of still working on him, bringing in the highlights. Um, as I said, I didn't spend a ton of time on him. Uh, he was pretty quick to, to throw in there, and um, but I needed to get him in before I moved on with uh, with anything else on the on the plane. Trying to get my lines straight. I like to use uh, use my little ruler there helps to get those lines pretty straight on those support beams between uh, the two wings. And then, of course, there's just a bunch of cables um, that are holding the structure together. So just get those kind of locked in real quickly. I'll, I'll highlight some of those later on. Uh, using my green, um, yellow-green color to highlight those. And uh, then, of course, drawing in where I want to see the other support beams with my charcoal pencil. So it really started coming along now, and uh, and it was it was a lot of fun seeing seeing this thing come to life. Um, Got to be patient though; it never looks like much of anything in the beginning. And as you keep working on it, it'll sl slowly manifest itself and come to life, and that's always fun to see. So the painting started getting pretty fun for me at this point in time as I started bringing in some of the primary subjects to the painting and so just bringing the highlights now and then just I'm kind of hitting that refining mode at this point in time uh, changing certain values and tones um, getting in the highlights just where I think I'd, I'd see a highlight from the sun on those wasn't happy with my line on that one. So I decided I was started using my script liner brush to add some of the cables, but then I decided just to change my mind and use a felt tip pen, which is what you see me using there. And um, those felt tip pens work great if you want to have real nice straight lines. Um, I use that a lot for some of the ships when I have a lot of cabling um, on old pirate ships and things. Uh, I love using the felt tip pen for that sometimes, but that's appropriate. All right, now just working on my wheels now. 
Um, and that's kind of the final thing I needed to bring in there. Using my, my dagger brush and uh, trying to get the shape of that wheel, kind of trying to form an ellipse. Um, since with the particular angle of this plane, uh, it, I needed to make sure it wasn't uh, just a, an exact circle. I needed more of an ellipse um, to give that a, that impression. And just using pure black. Um, I think I'm using a uh, midnight black uh, color. Bring in those highlights once again. And it kind of makes it come alive. So just kind of finishing up here, working on these wheels and um, just using my gray color. So it was a fun little plane to work on and the first time I've ever painted this type of plane, so it was kind of interesting and was a, it was a fun challenge for me. But it does take time and patience, so... I'm just about finished on this plane now. I think I come through later on, just add some more intense highlighting, and, and that's really kind of where I left it. And then just write in my, uh, my decal uh, some numbers here. Kind of adds a little bit of interest. Just an old warplane. Kind of hitting that final stage where we're getting some final highlights in just to kind of top it off. Any more intensity to the highlights now with pure white. So just kind of just playing with it. And now I'm bringing my propellers and uh, really just dry brush skimming. I want to give the illusion that it's that they're spinning. So not adding a lot of detail, just skimming in some lines to indicate that uh, those propellers are spinning and, and moving. All right, and then I coming back here, adding some more fencing. Um, at first, I didn't know I was going to do this, but as I was looking at the painting, I thought it might look kind of cool to uh, help to draw the eye even more. And as you look at my angles, um, I think what I was thinking at the time was um, that this would help to for the viewer to lead the eye more toward the center of the painting. So there was a little method behind the madness on this uh, decision to bring this in, but I thought it, it added something. I think it added a kind of a, a little touch to the painting, uh, added some more interest. And just to give that old aged kind of weathered appearance to this old homestead that's been abandoned for years and years, more broken fence line. Pretty simple strokes though. I think I, I just use mainly a uh, burnt umber, kind of grayed it out. Didn't want to have it real deep dark because of course it is more in the, moving into the distance. Um, so just kind of played with this a little bit.
So adding more highlights there, more whites, more golds. I'll come back through and refine that fence line a little more later on in my final detail stage. But like I said, I like to work things about 90% done, 95% done, and I always end up coming back. I'll even come back to that that orange plane and, and do some more refining at the very end that you'll see at the end of the video. So bring in some shadows to my fence line now, just a slight angle using my, my uh, umber and purple, a little sienna. And then just kind of work in that fence line, bring in more grasses, just refining. <clears throat> You'll notice on the cabin, um, I did add a couple things. I added some moss on the top of the cabin. Um, and then I thought it'd be interesting to show right through the cabin to the back of the tree. So I added just a little bit of, of, uh, of a window through the window so that you can see all the way through the cabin. So I just thought that might add some interest to the painting and, and just um, kind of open up that cabin. So but I didn't show it on this video. I just did it. So just coming back and working more highlights into my, my grass section, I wanted to get that even brighter as if the sun was really hitting that, give a nice separation. But I'm still thinking about my uh, rule of contrast on this and I wanted to continue to to have a lot of contrast in the painting so at this point in time I'm changing my focus on working on this little windmill into the uh, into the middle ground on this painting and I'm using uh, mainly just uh, umber with a little black, but um, kind of blocking in where the base on, on the wood, the wood posts here. And uh, so I'll just kind of try to work that. So now I'm just trying to block in sort of the back half of this windmill using uh, my umber. And then later I'll, of course, bring in the, the foreground on that structure. <clears throat> And slowly start adding in my highlights and just using uh, pure white for my highlight color just to continue to follow that basic theme that I've been using this whole time. Coming back now and intensifying with more white, those highlights. And 
And then just working from, from the back to the forefront. I'm going to start working here, the front of these posts now. Get these kind of re-blocked in here pretty soon. And of course, it'll it'll be the highlights that really help to separate this out. Right now, it looks like a bunch of just random lines. And I'm coming back with a with a light sienna mixture, just burnt sienna and white, and a <clears throat> a little blue, just to kind of gray it out. And then I'll start working on uh, these these fans pretty soon at the top of the windmill. And originally, I wasn't even thinking of adding um, this windmill to the painting. The idea for this really didn't come till till afterward. A lot of times I'll just look at a painting and I'll look at my composition and, and I'll just start seeing things or having ideas come to me and, <clears throat> excuse me. So one, one of the ideas I had was maybe putting in an old weathered windmill. Um, and, I, and I was looking at the painting, I thought, well, there's, there's quite a bit of space between the two planes. Um, so it kind of made most sense to put, put it here. I was, kind of thinking maybe to put it over by the house, but I thought that might get a little busy with the tree in the back and with the most distant plane that's flying uh, toward the shack. So it just made better sense in my mind to, to put it out here into the field. So it's working on the shadows here. Um, bring in the high grasses to help seat the windmill. That way it doesn't look like it's just kind of floating there. Working on my roll of contrast. So now just working on those fans. So it was, it was a fun little thing. I've again, I've I've not painted this subject before, so I did a little research online, found found these these uh, photo images of of these fans on um, on farms, and uh, kind of uh, was able to use that as a reference point to figure out how I wanted mine to look. So just kind of blocking this in now and getting my highlights starting to go. I think the uh, challenge was making this fan kind of appear angled. Um, some of the fans are kind of angled away from the viewer, so that was uh, an interesting challenge. But I thought it added some nice character to to the fan itself, to the windmill itself. I'm coming back and just kind of working my highlights, working my shadows, and I'll just kind of keep kind of building this thing out as I go.
And so after adding this windmill, I was I was pleased um, with with the outcome and uh, in the placement of of that. I pondered for a while on exactly where I'd want to put it, if I put it at all. And it was kind of a last minute decision on my part to do that. But that's what makes painting fun is just uh, you're never sure exactly what you're going to start with. And I had a rough idea. <clears throat> I had a rough idea of kind of what I wanted and I, I sketched out my composition and knew I was going to have my my planes flying over a field, uh, over by a shack, and that was really kind of all I knew about what I wanted to do with it. So, <clears throat> and uh, and then just to have the little surprises that come along as I'm, as I'm working on the painting and other, other ideas that were kind of forming in my mind. So now I'm blocking in my, my other plane here. I started blocking in kind of a dark uh, gray green, thinking that maybe my plane would be green. But then I decided, or more like an army green, but then I decided I would change that, that maybe what would make sense would be to make it more of a red color because there's so much green in the painting anyway, and red is the complement to green, and I thought that would, would even look better than having a uh, an army green color plane in, in the painting. So, so you'll see me change that. And here's what I'm changing it right now. And I kind of started using sort of a dark crimson color. Um, I use kind of a, a mixture of, of mostly crimson, but just a little bit of emerald or of hooker's green. <clears throat> And then I decided, well, that was too dark. Let's go ahead and just do a, more of a red color. And, and this is this color is is my my phthalo red with um, with green. So that was my primary dark red color. And by using its complement of green mixed in with that, it helps to really dull it and darken it up a lot kind of gray it out a little bit and that served as I think a better base for my red plane and then I can add my my highlights which again is going into that red green mixture and just adding a little more white and a little maybe even a little orange and I'm just uh, dry brush blending right now so I, I allowed my my base coat to dry completely and and then just put a very little amount of paint on my brush wiped a lot of it clean and then just kind of skim my uh or scumble on this color and, and and soften it and and that's really all that this is is just a, a, a dry brush blending technique that i think works very well for this subject because I want the planes again to to appear somewhat aged um, give it that kind of used weathered look and I think that it served pretty well with with this particular approach so slowly building in my highlights using uh, my red white and a little orange mixture there And then started kind of working on the decals a little bit. And again, this this plane probably took me about three, three and a half hours of work. So I put a significant amount of time. I wanted a lot of detail into it. slowly kind of building in my highlights as we 
progress through through this plane. And I'm using a little bit more um, of a light blue, mostly white, but a light blue mixture here to bring in the highlights on that tail flap. And then using more blue over the blue stripe. So um, trying to stay true to the the tone and value of that particular stripe color. And then, of course, bringing in the, the lines in the plane, which I just used um, a, that, that red-green mixture. I just made it darker. Um, that way, the lines weren't really, really dark or deep um, to offend the eye. So um, you don't want to use a pure black on your lines at all with with this would be my advice now just sort of painting in the stand that uh, the plane would rest on once it parks and so that's what we're kind of building in right there And this lar starting to put in some of the cabling. Um, uh, this guy who's flying the plane is gonna gonna want to turn the plane, so uses those cables to manipulate the tail wing there. So really just um, trying to grab all the detail slowly and there was just a lot of detail on this plane so it, it did take a while apologize my head's in the way so much um, it was hard to get the exact uh, camera angle that i wanted to achieve There's a lot going on underneath the plane, a lot of cables and wires and things that uh, I just used a pure black. It's more of a silhouette. So I didn't need to put an enormous amount of detail into it, but uh, wanted to get that in there and then just allow the eye to draw the conclusion. Adding more highlight, more, more of a reds um, and lightening up where I think the sun's going to be striking the top of this plane. This is where I'm going to be um, getting ready to put my little gun. We'll be at the top. So just creating the, the stand for this gun and uh, it's kind of anchored here. So just using my script liner brush, using a pure black as my color. Not a lot of detail here, just need to make the silhouette pretty much. Um, didn't spend a lot of time on it, didn't really need to. And 
And then I can move my attention to the front of the plane, start working on, uh, I wanted to have this appear to be just uh, a raw metal. Um, so used my, my gray mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt umber and white, and then uh, just changed the, the values of that to kind of help to create the sun glow and the sparkle off the metal. Um, but keeping it pretty raw. There's quite a bit of detail that went into this, um, trying to form the engine that you can kind of see poking out. And then just a lot of highlights that uh, help to sort of form that shape. And then using some pure white um, for, for my most uh, bright uh, highlights on this. And this will be uh, a little shadow I'm forming here. I'll have a, uh, a pipe sticking out kind of an exhaust pipe that'll be sticking out. So I'm putting the shadow in first for that. And then I can add the uh, exhaust pipe later. Again, I used a reference piece. I found um, an image of, of a plane online, a photograph that uh, I thought would work really well for this. And then I just had to do a little ad-libbing a little bit on some of this um, just to make it work with the general composition of the painting. Mainly had to ad-lib on where I thought I would find the sun, uh, highlights of the sun hitting the plane and, uh, and then just try to form my own conclusion on that. So I used uh, several reference pieces uh, for the windmill, the planes, um, for the shack. I found a couple different shacks uh, online, photographs of old shacks that I liked. And I just sort of uh, <clears throat> created um, a composite of all those, of all those different images and, and kind of created my own. Um, so it was a, it was a lot of fun. I was, I wasn't, quite sure how things were going to turn out on this painting as well. Um, I just had a basic idea of what I wanted to see and then I just kind of let it form itself and that was kind of fun to just let it sort of get a mind of its own and and uh, start to, I was even surprised at some of the things that kind of the decisions that I made at the very end that I thought might work for the painting. So. Getting this uh, little decal painted in on the side um, just adds a little bit of interest and variety as well. And I'm getting ready to <clears throat> draw my little man in. I, I sketched him, as you can see, just a little silhouette of, of a pilot that we'll just draw in and very little detail mainly he's in silhouette with just a very minor amount of um, of highlight And so just blocking him in with just pure black. Get his little head in there and his shoulders. I knew a lot of his head was going to get covered up by the uh, posts supporting the, the wings. But um, a little of his head's going to be sticking out to be seen. So. 
Uh, didn't spend a whole lot of time on that. Now I'm just dry brush blending in some highlight uh, for the top of the wing with just a really light version of that burnt umber. And then I'm coming back with some of my dark red um, that I'm using uh, just to kind of border around that wing. And then bringing in his collar and his shoulder and uh, his goggles. He has a little strap around his head. And so, yeah, not a whole lot of effort or detail in, in, in the pilot, since I knew he was going to get largely covered up anyway. So just going to sketch in where I know that those support beams are going to be. And then just using a really dark purple umber color. I think I just used white burnt umber and purple to form the, the dark base on those. So just using a dark orange is my highlight on here. And uh, it's just, uh, again, a mixture of, of orange and blue. My propeller. And then just simply highlighting them with, with pure white. Um, not a lot to, to that at all. So I'm beginning to hit that stage now where I'm just in refining mode and uh, bringing in the, the right highlights, um, just kind of perfecting little, little things here and there that I see. So a lot goes into getting getting this plane kind of built in, but at the end I was I think I was pretty pleased with how it turned out, and uh, now just doing my little final strokes here, um, mostly final strokes, and again using my felt tip pen to bring in the cables. That way I wasn't having to labor over getting an exact straight line with a script liner brush, which is not always easy to do. So just a good little handy trick. So at this point in time, um, I'm kind of at the final stages of, of just um, final strokes, get, get little adjustments made, bring in uh, little final highlighting. A lot of my my uh, highlights, I just used a, a pure gesso because it's so thick, a thick white gesso that uh, I can get a really good covering of, of highlight on it. So a lot of these things I'm just using gesso as, as my final highlight. Uh, my Getting a little more grasses in there. I'm using more of a, of a yellow and a white with just a little green mixed in. And just to try to really get those to pop out.
working on my tree. I'm doing some individual leafing, getting some really, really bright um, leaf patterns uh, put in on this tree so that it really kind of pops out much better. And I wanted to um, get a lot of uh, good yellow leafing um, that's sort of breaking the horizon so that it's really kind of showing the, those individual leaf patterns. And I, I just thought that would look really kind of nice since it's un, unencumbered by, by anything in the background other than just the sky. And just doing little highlights on my hill in the back. And um, yeah, this is just the final refining mode here. Um, this is the part that, you know, I said I get about 90, 95% done with, with my painting. And then that last five or 10% is just going back through at the very end. And that's the finished version of the painting. Um, it was a lot of fun doing, and uh, I certainly appreciate uh, you tuning in and watching, and I hope that was helpful. Um, just giving you a couple shots of, of the painting, certain sections of the painting up close to kind of see what we worked on here. But uh, all in all, I think it turned out well, and it was a lot of fun to uh, do, and I Again, encourage you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Mark Harville Art. And uh, you'll find other videos. Um, I'll be looking forward to doing a brand new video tutorial here really soon. And uh, I certainly appreciate you tuning in. Thanks so much.